Hideki Matsuyama and Victor Hovland had huge weeks last week to get the PGA playoffs started. Can they catch Shoffley and Scheffler? We will see. Welcome to Tea Time, everyone. I'm Andy from wagertalk.com, being joined, as always, by my fellow golf betting expert, Nick Foreman. Uh, Nick, we've got a course that uh, we really haven't seen in basically forever on the PGA Tour. <laughs> I don't even know if anybody in the field has played this this course, but uh, really interesting, beautiful course in Colorado. Um, I think the big storyline here is that it's the longest course in PJ history, but it comes with quite a big asterisk there. Uh, we're looking at an 8,100-yard course, except it's what way high. Is that, is that, is that right, Nick? Yeah. Uh, the cor- you're talking about the course elevation is, yeah. is 6,200 feet, I believe, is the number above uh, sea level. So, yeah, like one point two miles. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. One point two mile. <laughs> um, yeah, so it's a really nice course. Um, we can kind of get into the nuances of it. Here's my take on this course, and we really are kind of guessing. We don't have any course history here, but here's what I know about it. Um, there seems to be a lot of elevation that they're going to walk um, up. It, it looks like what four hundred feet, and so you have a lot of holes that are downhill and then uphill and you've got this huge elevation um change i i I think distance control is going to be like absolutely massive the first couple rounds who are the guys that can figure out how long their seven iron really goes um you know how long does their you know wedge really go i think there's some guys that are really going to struggle the first couple days and there's some guys that are going to get it dialed in and they're really going to thrive the fairways seem to be really big um, but the rough is four inches thick and it is seem to be, it does seem to be pretty thick, uh, rough. They, they get quite a bit of rain up there, uh, in, in this area. So I think there are some potential, uh, there's, there's potential for some guys to really struggle here. 10 holes with water hazards on it. Um, the greens to me do not look that tough to figure out. The par fives are very gettable. There's a lot of bunkers, but overall they don't seem, they don't seem to be too difficult. So my kind of take on this, Nick, is you're going to see a really, really big gap between the guys that struggle and the guys that are really good. I think the, there's it's potential for a birdie fest if guys get this uh, tee to green figured out. I think we could see a minus eight or lower on this course. And I also think there's going to be some guys that can't figure out um, how the, the, the club distance. And I think you're going to see some guys like maybe don't even have a round that, that – that's under par. So I think if I think if they get tee to green, I think you could see a birdie fest. I think a couple guys get out and shoot really, really low. What's your take on Castle Pines? Yeah, I mean, we obviously don't have a lot of data to go back on to and look at past winners and, you know, what their skill sets are involved. You mentioned uh, if anybody had played here in this field before. Yeah, 2006 was the last time it was called the International uh, Tournament was played here. There is one person in this field that has played here in an event. It wasn't even 2006. It was before that. He didn't play that particularly. He played a few, uh, or played one time prior to that. Adam Scott. He was 20 oh, years old. It was his, it was his first course. non-major start, I think, is what they said. His first non-major start was here. I forget what year. It might have been like 02. But yeah, it was uh, Adam Scott is the only player. Not that it matters now, 20-some years later. He, he ain't going to remember anything. But <laughs> it is interesting that he is the only one. Some of these guys were barely two years old, three years old at that time. Um, but yeah, the, the course itself, I mean, what, what's going to be fun, as you mentioned, is just trying to figure out your distance. Uh, I'm reading, you know, first of all, PGA to a record, 8,100 plus yards for the for the course this week, not the actual playing yard, which is going to be roughly 10% is what they're kind of throwing out there as the standard number uh, less is what it'll play. So maybe like 7,300 yards. Um, or about a club and a half for most guys. So yeah, it'll be very, very difficult to figure out, you know, your yardages. And then you mentioned the 400 feet of elevation. So the first hole itself drops 100 feet. Uh, you look at the first hole, Andy. It's a par five, measuring 659 yards, and is ex- extremely gettable into by pretty much everybody in the field. The 659 plays to about 599, and then it's a hundred yard, hundred foot drop from tee to green. So as long as you're hitting the fairway, that thing's going to roll out. Most people are going to be able to get here home in two in that hole. It's kind of neat to think about. But listen, I, without the past tournament data to look at, the best thing to look to, 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 to try to gauge your players is just standard ball striking numbers, T degree numbers. 
Um, this course is tricky. It does require some, you know, some placement and some thinking. There's some good dog legs out there. There's plenty of protected greens. There's hazards all over the place. So it is really pinpoint as far as where you're placing the ball. I think putting, I usually talk about this when you get to an unknown course or unknown greens. I think a lot of times it helps the poor putter because, you know, you get to a good putter. Once they learn the greens, that's where their advantage really kicks in. But when everybody's still trying to figure out the nuances of the breaks, that's where kind of that advantage goes away. Like if you get two guys that are uh, that know the exact putt, you get a good putter and a bad putter. Well, the good putter is going to excel more often than the bad putter. But when you get you take away the knowledge, it kind of levels that playing field. So I think putting is probably something you got to make them. But I don't think there's an advantage to somebody that's a good putter necessarily over a bad putter this week. I think it kind of does level that. Um, it's really just going to be ball striking. And, and the one thing that I'm I'm paying attention to this week is kind of the recent form of these players. So I mentioned this last week, but of the big events this season, Andy, I, uh, that would include the majors, the signature events, the players, uh, Olympics, and now the first playoff event, 12 of the 15 winners have ranked inside the top 10 total strokes gained over the both the previous three and six months. So 12 out of 15, that's a pretty significant number. Uh, 80% of the winners have been in that category, including Matsuyama last week. So it's just got to be somebody that's red hot, that's coming in in good form. It's not going to be a a guy that kind of comes out of nowhere this week, especially with an unknown course. So there's not much more I can add to that. I'm excited to watch. Uh, you know, I, I, I'm pretty sure I did watch. I was watching golf back in the international days. I don't remember a dang thing about it, but I'm sure I was watching some of this tournament, you know, when I was, I guess, 20 years ago. How old was I? I would have been 18, 19 years old. I'm 38, 39, I'm 39 now. So <laughs> yeah. I don't know if I'll remember it. Anymore. That was a long time ago, but looking forward to it. Yeah, it's a really cool course. Uh, I, I I think it might I think it might prove to be pretty easy for 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 some of these guys, oh. but at the same time, it's just so visually cool. like different and cool and unique. Um, it just it's up in the mountains. There's just trees everywhere. It's just really cool looking course. You know what's interesting? Uh, I don't know if this matters at all, but it's just an interesting point. So when they played the international tournament here for 20 years, uh, they played it as modified Stableford scoring. It was, it's that risk reward where like the Eagles are worth, like a birdie's worth more than a bogey is bad, right? So I, this is the first time that they're playing a standard stroke play event. I don't know, like, you know, because of the elevation, because of the fact that you're just kind of guessing probably a little bit, it kind of makes sense to be a modified stable for, because you're just like, ah, just go for a bunch of birdies. If you miss, oh, well, it's not going to hurt you that much. So it is going to play a, a lot different than, I guess, those old school tournaments. I was looking at the winning scores and I saw a winning score of 47. I'm like, wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's interesting. I'm going over to Portugal in a week for a golf, uh, for a golf outing. And I just found out it's stable for <laughs> scoring. <laughs> so, <laughs> is it true? That's true. That's awesome. Yeah. 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 It's, so yeah cool. It'll be fun. I've, I, I've been practicing for the last couple months. Uh, got a big, got a big net for my backyard. Uh, so I've been practicing and then over the next couple of weeks I will, uh, I'll be playing a lot more, getting ready because it's golf every day, oh, cool. and and uh, a couple of the guys that I'm playing with, it's it's a good mix of guys that are not good and good, but a couple of the guys, okay. grew, grew, the couple of guys grew up and played juniors with Roy McIlroy. They're good. Oh. There's going to be there's going to be some really good. Gonna be, yeah, there's going to be some pretty <laughs> good, <laughs> and I'm not one of them. Um, <laughs> so I'm going to need to pick your brain about about tips. On golf trip, actually, there you go. Homework assignment, comment section. This is my first like golf trip where we're playing golf like five days in a row. Uh, get up early, uh, do play the golf, and then just kind of relax. And I don't want to say party for the rest of the day. What are tips that you guys can give me? Because I have not done this before, and I I I think I'm physically good to to handle it. Uh, but man, I don't know. There's, there's gotta be some tips that I'm, that I'm missing. So leave it in the comment section below, hit the like button, leave me a comment if you've been on one of these golf trips. So, uh, Nick, let's take a look at the total strokes gain chart. As you said, now it's just becoming essential to take a look at this chart and, uh, we're going to figure out where, uh, the winner comes from. So yeah, Matsuyama is really coming on strong. Uh, you could, and I'll let you talk about it, but yeah, I mean, look at the difference in some of these guys from the 12 months uh, compared to the six months and three months. So what do we take away from this chart this week? Uh, your winner somewhere on this graphic. That's what I take away uh, because history has proven that seems to be the case in these bigger events right now. And I did all the work for everybody. So while it is organized in order of the top 10 over the last 12 months, the only three other players that break into the top 10 in the shorter term in the six or three months are down there at the bottom in your notables. 
So one of these 13 players is the ones that's going to rank inside that top six and top, or excuse me, top 10 of the six months and three months that, that has proven to be an 80% predictor of big winners this year. So these are the guys. There's no surprises. We know who the best of the players are. Uh, the bottom is kind of where I'm looking into because that's where you got the guys that have really turned it on as of late. And they're your recent winners. You got Aaron Rye two weeks ago. You got Matsuyama last week. And you can see, I mean, Matsuyama especially, you can see it in his, in his numbers. He's been incredible since uh, winning the Genesis earlier this year. and He'd kind of come out of nowhere at that point. So uh, Victor Hovland, what, what, what's up with that? I'm sure we'll talk a little bit about that, right, Andy? Uh, mm-hmm. You know, maybe he's just born to play the FedEx Cup playoffs. A guy comes out of nowhere. Had, seemingly, he had one top 10. This entire season, and then he comes out of nowhere, finishes uh, ding. He had a, he had the lead, didn't he, by himself at one point in the back nine after Matsuyama went double double. I think he had a one shot lead. Um, crazy to even think about. It. He was in that position. So, I you know, Scotty and Xander. Anything other than the top five would be a surprise to me. Those guys are just incredibly consistent, and in over four days, they will just rise to the top no matter what. I mean, it just keeps to be proven. But your Finau, he seems to be getting a lot of talk. This week, um, I guess he has some history, maybe just proximity wise in not at this course, but in Colorado in general. I haven't really delved dive deeper into that. Uh, and then Billy Horschel has been playing very, very steady as well. And Aaron, Aaron Rye, of course. So it's hard for me, Andy, to want to believe, well, not want to believe, but to think that the actual winner of this event is probably not going to be on the screen. These are pretty big, pretty big names, all in pretty good, big form. By the end of, end of Sunday last week, I mean, who was at the top of that leaderboard? It was all these guys, right? So. It's hard not to see it coming here, but I, I would really pay attention right now because it's proven to be a little bit truer. Uh, the shorter term, the six month and three month numbers, may be a little bit more important than that twelve month uh, as we get into these final two events. I, for for fun's sake, I put in the graphic as you can see the not defending champion here, Dean Wilson, was your last winner at Castle Pines, two thousand six. Just so you guys are aware, <laughs> that's all I got. <laughs> 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 Dean Wilson might be my accountant right now, and I wouldn't have this. Um, Very good chance. I, yeah, Nick, Nick, can I push back just a little bit on uh, on, on the leaderboard last week? So Matsuyama and Hovland, Shoffley, Scheffler. Yeah, look at this graphic. This is littered with guys that disappoint. Colin Morikawa. Rory. I'm sorry, he's been a disappointment this year. Rory, what was that? Oh, I, I mean, gosh. I mean, I mean, I mean, seriously. Um, Ludwig Aber, we talked about him. He's kind of fallen off of a cliff. Um, yes. Russell Henley, we like him. He's not winning these tournaments. He's he's nope. finishing good, but he's not winning these. Patrick Cantlay doesn't look like he can sniff a win. Fleetwood, we all know, is never going to win. Uh, anyway. <laughs> not here. <laughs> <laughs> you know, here, uh, Billy Horschel. I, listen, this is a guy that you know keep, keeps coming on strong. But look at some of these guys that were up in the top ten. Sam Burns. Has been playing really good. Sure. Horschel, we mentioned. Yeah. Wyndham Clark quietly has yeah. been playing pretty decent. Like he's back to a little bit of form. Denny McCarthy, his short game goes ballistic and he gets there. Robert McIntyre, out of nowhere. Nick Dunlap. These are all guys that first round of the playoffs just beat big names here on the on this chart. So I I have I have my I have my fingers crossed, my hopes up that some of these guys will continue to outplay these bigger names like McElroy and Morikawa. And I, I enjoy seeing these guys push some of these, these bigger name guys. I think, I think, I think when you have a mix of the big names with some of the younger, you know, up and comers, yes. the guys we don't really know, I think that Agreed. makes it, you know, pretty fun. So, and I'm I like, I'm sorry, man. And like Rory and Morikawa, it, that's, that's not good enough. It, it, like some of these performances, Twenty uh, second for Morikawa is that it's terrible for a guy with his accolades and his talent. And McElroy, that's just embarrassing uh, to go out there and finish sixty eighth out of you know seventy guys. I whatever you get off to a bad start, you know it doesn't matter. I guess for him with the FedEx, but I don't know, man. I just I, I would I would expect better from from some of these guys because uh, you know it's playoff time. You get couple tournaments left so so anyway I, I'm, I'm 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 pulling for guys like aaron ride denny mccarthy and you know dunlap and some of these guys i enjoy seeing but, yeah, uh, he actually got a tie for 13th too he had a decent week yeah absolutely um I, I i was i was mad last week i one of my plays was aaron rye over hovland rye had a great week oh. he played really yeah. good and then <laughs> happens that i, I would have bet that i would bet that 100 out of 100 andy 
Yeah, and you know it happens in golf. You get a guy that's you know that catches fire. So um, yeah. let's move on to uh, players that can trip you up. And this is a tough one because we only got the, some limited guys. So this segment, as you guys know, I try and pick some really highly ranked players and guys that are short shorter favorites, and try and fe- try and see who everyone's going to play this week. And I think it's going to trip them up. And I will start with Hideki Matsuyama, uh, last week's winner. I mean, last week he was plus 5.7 strokes gained approach. Nick, plus 8.2 strokes gained putting. Going into yeah, last week's tournament, <laughs> going into last week's tournament, this man was plus 0.57 strokes gained approach and minus 0.11 strokes gained putting on the year. So he goes from an average of minus. 0.11 to plus 8.2. Listen, maybe he's hitting his stride late in the year, but last week was so out of the norm for him. I just have to believe some kind of regression is coming. He's priced as a top five guy. Listen, if he plays out of his mind again, more power to him. He proves me wrong. This will look like a bad prediction. But if he regresses even a little bit uh, to his usual numbers, I think he's going to be outside the the top five and maybe even the top 10 um, you know, with with – just a just a, even a tiny bit of regression, especially the putting. His putter was insane last week. So I got Matsuyama as a player that that may disappoint. And then I'm going right back to Hovland. I don't buy it. I, I don't buy. I don't buy last <laughs> week's for his best performance of the year. Um, but like Hideki, I just don't think he he keeps it up. Coming into the tournament, his average total strokes gained. He he he. It wasn't even a plus one. It was plus zero point nine one, and he was plus zero point two two putting. That's for the year. Last week, plus three point three putting and plus ten point seven total strokes gained. I don't think it was sustainable last week. I think he struggles. I know, I know that the, I know that there's Tawel. You know, maybe he just plays good in the playoffs and he's here to defend the title. And I just, I don't buy it. I watched this guy disappoint too many times. I'm not going to overreact to one really, really good out of control uh, performance from him. So Matsuyama and Hovland are a couple guys. Um, that uh that I think can disappoint this week. I had Scheffler last week uh, as a guy disappointing. He finished fourth. I feel like that that's was a disappointing. Uh, yeah. yeah, I think that's <laughs> you, th- you think He's that's- three to one to win. I- of course, that's a disappointment. <laughs> You're probably right, man. I yeah, you gotta have a. I guess you gotta have a top two finish. And he lost his head to head to Shoffley. I guess that's another. One. <laughs> I mean, maybe that maybe that's kind of a nice that measuring is. stick. But like, yeah, that you- is. You know, because that's what the head-to-heads are, and you're a favorite against Shoffley. You kind of gotta, kind of gotta bring it home yep. there a little bit. So, yep. uh, all right, let's talk about an outright winner. Uh, but first, Nick, tell everyone what you have up over at WagerTalk.com. I know we got golf, and uh, a lot of soccer has uh, finally kicked into action. Uh, so, what plays do you have available for everyone at Wager Talk? Yes, and by the way, good job on that segment. Very difficult to pick <laughs> guys that might trip you up this week in this field. Uh, good job there. Yeah, so right now, uh, soccer is back. Premier League kicked off this past weekend. Awesome start to the season, 4-1, and one, plus 12 units gain, including a 5% winner to, for opening weekend. Couldn't have asked for a better start. Right now, you can get the entire season Premier League uh, BOGO deal, myself and Kevin Dolan, just two ninety nine. So a lot, a lot of soccer left. That goes until May of 2025. So plenty of time to still grab that. Uh, this particular week, we have the Leaks Cup semifinals on Wednesday. I actually have a uh, 5% play on in the, on that card going right now. Uh, so that's if you're watching this on Tuesday, you have until uh, Wednesday. I think that game kicks off in the evening. So you can check that out as well. And, of course, we still have um, two weeks left here in this golf season. And uh, I have my package uploaded at wagetalk.com right now. So you can get this week's BMW Championship Pack and include all four days uh, plays, pre tournament plays, and of course, anything added throughout the week as well. So all that's available right now on my page at wagetalk. Love it. Let's talk about an outright winner. You're going to uh, tackle a little bit of different markets. So make sure we explain this market really clear and how we're going to play it. Yeah, I am absolutely going with the without Shoffley and without Scheffler market uh, this week, most likely next week. It does take away a little bit of pricing. So we're caught talking about Tony Finau this week in the standard outright market. He is 30, maybe 33 to one to win. So you're going to lose some value on him, but there's no worse feeling right now than getting a runner up or a third place and only to see 
Xander or Scotty sitting above you. And you're like, well, the only reason I didn't take them is because they're three to one or six to one to win. It just doesn't make sense to take them. So get them out of the market. Look uh, to those markets if you're going to bet outright. Unless you're just putting all your eggs in one of those guys, then by all means, go ahead. But now he's been quietly steady golf, playing steady golf. He ranks fifth in the field in total strokes gained over the last three months, uh, dating back to the PGA Championship in May. As a result, he's finished inside the top 20, Andy, in seven of his last eight starts. His approach play has been ridiculously good. He's gained an average of plus 1.31 strokes gained approach over the last three months. He's a one of only three players averaging more than one stroke per round. And this is not a coincidence. The other two, well, they're the guys that were betting in the without market. It's Xander and it's Scotty. So he's in very good company there. Uh, in fact, on the season, Finau ranks seventh. Total strokes gained, second strokes gained approach, but he's been held back, and we've talked about this before, by his flat stick, where he ranks 121st in putting. However, you always try to find the potential in guys, right? It's all about the potential and maybe the more recent form. He seems to have turned that into a strength over the last two months. So he's gained strokes on the greens in six straight events, Andy, an average of plus 0.55 per round during that stretch. And wouldn't you know, that would be good enough to rank him in the top 10 putting in this field. So it's just interesting. You know, will it continue this week? We're only guessing, but signs are, po- are, are pointing to the fact that the guy is starting to roll up pretty well and putting so much of that is mental and confidence. So he's got it going right now. He's got a hot putter. And again, I mentioned before, combined with the fact that the unknown greens generally help the poor putters as far as how they perform in relation to the field. I think we're kind of taking away his biggest weakness this week. So I expect his T to green to be in shape, and I expect his putting to be good enough to at least give us a chance on Sunday. But I, I do expect Finau to have a good week this week. 22 to 1, again, play the Zant without Xander and Scotty Markets. I do think it's worth doing that uh, right now in these last two. Yeah, good call. I mean, we see these guys, I mean, their putting can change overnight. I mean, M- M- Matsuyama and Hovland, you know, last week. So nice to see Tony putting the ball uh, really well. It's always been his. It's always been his weakness there, um, just those really, really clutch putts, but he seems to be making them uh, more than he's missing them now. So um, let's take a look at uh, DraftKings Darlings. Before we get into that, if you're watching this on Tuesday, 5% MMA play that is up for Dana White Contender Series. Uh, Dana White Contender Series starts at 7 o'clock Eastern on Tuesday. So if you're watching before this, make sure you go grab that. Um, we are number two in all sports units, up 125 units. Uh, so we're really, really proud about that. We've turned a profit eight weeks in a row. We're coming off another winning week in MMA. We are nine and three in our last 12 plays. Um, so take advantage of that. We've hit our last three 5% plays, uh, all of them involving uh, MMA. So I uh, hope to get the week started off right with a 5% winner tonight at, uh, you, uh, at Dana White Contender Series. Uh, wt.buzz slash al and then after tuesday we've got a four percent and three percent soccer plays that are up that's all in one package uh that'll get all soccer plays coming up for this week number one lifetime in soccer units since we joined wager talk uh up 120 units so pretty happy with all the sports that we've been running recently take advantage of that andy lang wagertalk.com let's take a look at draft kings darlings i'm going back to uh i'm going back to grazerman um, I, like 33rd wasn't amazing last week, but still really good. And they just have this guy really, really underpriced. So 6,300. Yeah, I'll take it in a really short field that, you know, we know we're going to get uh, four rounds. Um, here's something interesting, Nick. Since July 1st, this guy's 15th in the field in total strokes gained. That get is out of here. ahead of, that's better than Tony Finau, Corey Connors, and Tommy Fleetwood. So wait, I just talked about did. me now. You can't. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I'm just, I'm just telling you, some of these big name guys are not playing very well right now, and it's opened the door for these guys like Grazerman and Aaron. Do you like Grazerman? Yeah, like, like, like it's it, like I think we just pencil in the some of these big name guys, and like Cantlay's not getting it done. Roy McIlroy's not getting it done. So there's some of these guys are taking advantage and sneaking in. So Grazman seems to be one kind of peaking here towards the end of the end of the year. So at 6,300. Yeah. Heck yeah. Uh, sign me up, man. Uh, there's another guy at 6,300. Uh, Austin Eckroat. Listen, he's not had a great year, but the last two weeks he's finished 18th and sixth. 
So I feel like I got to roll the dice. Like, man, if we get a top 20 finish from him, the 6,300 is just going to be like an absolute steal. And I will just point out that last week in the playoffs, this is in the playoffs. Last week, he finished better than McElroy, Morikawa, Bear, Fleetwood, Connors, M, Henley, and many other guys priced way ahead of him. So Austin Eckrode's provided some really, really good value for his price. So uh, Austin Eckrode at 6,300. And then uh, Eric Cole, last year's DraftKings darling of the year, Nick, kind of catching fire here. His last yeah. seven finishes are 18th, 7th, 31st, 46th, 7th, and 6th. And I looked into his stats. It's all about putting the last two months. His putting really struggled, but over the last two months, uh, he's plus 0.7 total strokes gain putting. So uh, Grazeman, Eckrote, and Cole. And as you can tell by the prices, um, uh, I, th th that gives you enough money. To, I'll just give everyone my lineup. I, that's enough money to have Shoffley and Scheffler in your lineup, by the way. You can put those guys in. And then I put a guy like Taylor Pendrith at 7,300. But Nick, I'm kind of with you that how, you, how you're playing the markets without Scheffler and Shoffley. I feel like this week on this course, uh, you kind of need Shoffley and Scheffler in your lineup and then roll the dice with some uh, lower price guys. I feel like those these guys are just kind of a shoe in to go super, super low. So uh, those are my DraftKings darlings. Let's take a look at a uh, total or a, a finishing position here. And we're looking at the top 20 markets. Who do you have your eyes on this week? Aaron Rye. Got to ride the hot hand. I mean, we've been talking about him now, I feel like, pretty regularly every single show for the last month or maybe two. And if you're looking for guys – Keep it in play off the tee this week. I think Rye has got to be the guy that should come to your mind. Probably to the top of your mind. I mean, he does rank first, Andy, in driving accuracy this season. He's hitting just under 72% of fairways. Why I mentioned hitting the fairways this week, you mentioned as we were talking about the course, the rough can be pretty thick. But I look at it like, you know, the way this course is set up, and the first hole is a good example with the elevation change. You're going to get a ton of rollout with the elevation change in a lot of these holes, if you stay in the fairway, as soon as you grab in the rock, you're going to lose that. So you're talking about there's situations where, you know, the ball might roll. It's like kind of like when they go to where they play in the beginning of the season, um, at Kapalua or whatever, and the guys, you know, you might get 100 oh, yards to roll out. Maybe it's not, yeah, maybe it's not that much, 100 yards to roll out. But I think it's, the point is, is that you can go from, you know, an, if you stay in the fairway and you're running down a big hill, a nine iron versus if you don't, you, hit, you catch the rough and you stay on top of the hill, and now you're all of a sudden hitting a five, six iron in there. So I do think it's very important this week to actually stay in the fairway. More than distance is important because I think the distance is going to get um, just <laughs> – it's going to go away because of how, how, how their elevation is this week. But he's very good, obviously, accuracy off the tee. He also ranks sixth strokes gauge appro approach this season, third in greens and regulation, and a respectable 36th in strokes gained around the – the green and all that combines to have him actually rank seventh in total strokes game this season, Aaron Rye. Uh, like Finau, though, his biggest weakness can be his putting. Uh, it is better than Finau. He, only, he ranked 61st this year compared to Finau outside the top 120. But kind of like Finau, he's also rolling the rock much better as of late. He's gained strokes on the greens in five of his last seven starts. It's a big reason he's cashed top 20 tickets in seven of his last eight starts, including is a win a couple of weeks ago at the Wyndham Championship. I think he's just kind of like, I mean, he's not really under the radar, but when you compare him against the top of the list, you know, not not a lot of people are going to be, other than you and I, talking about him. They're going to be looking at the Xanders and the, and the, and the Scotties. But as much of an under-radar pick as you can have in a limited field of 50 players where maybe only 20 are actually playing well, I think Aaron Rye might be the best of that. And he ranks on the all-important top 10 total strokes gained over the last three and six months as well to fit that last uh, trend for this week. So I think Aaron Rye to finish top 10 at plus 250 or top 20 to kind of protect your investment at minus 125. And again, play the including ties markets because most of the books are offering those now. Uh, I think that's very important. But Aaron Rye, I think, should have another good week again this week. Yeah, Aaron Rye is a perfect example of if you can catch these guys that are just a little bit off the radar, the books are not – the books are not prepared to take a bunch of money on Aaron Rye top twenties or Aaron Rye, you know, like in a head to head matchup, but they're, they're ready. They're ready to get pounded with Scheffler money and Shoffley money and everything. And Aaron Rye has been a moneymaker, absolute moneymaker. Um, he's been a fantastic parlay piece, like to make the cut and top forties and things like that. Drafting. Is, like, uh, is he like our Eric Cole from last year? That was our guy last year, right? Eric Cole. 
You like Eric, Eric Cole? Cole? Yeah, Eric Cole is the man. <laughs> just like like every week, I check DraftKings, and he's like, "Ah, eh, sixty seven hundred. And it's like D- D- he always <laughs> finishes the <laughs> board. Yeah, like, yeah, I'll pop him in. But Aaron, yeah, Aaron Rye has been the guy that's just been very consistently good. This is, I mean, I I think this is is his best year. Didn't he get his? I think it's the first win. So this is just a yep. career year for Aaron Rye. And if you've You'd been paying attention, you know, and really seeing what was happening. You're like, oh, there's something he's improved a little bit. Um, and as we see some of these guys, some of these guys that are good, if they just like improve by one stroke every tournament, it's amazing how much how much they just jump up the leaderboard. Um uh I I, I remember I remember uh hearing this, Nick. Did you ever hear Max Homa talk about when he really made his like Max Homa used to be like missed cut every week. Um, oh, yeah. And now he's having, he's having a terrible year, but he talked about what really changed for him was he was looking, he was like, you know, I make like two mistakes off the tee each round that cost me like two or three strokes. And that's the difference between missing the cut and making the cut. If I can just get to the weekend and I can prove it. So he's like, I just cut out like really missing like two bad shots off the tee. He's like that, that was, that was my entire okay. goal. And he's like overnight, Overnight, I started making the cut and started having success. And he was like, just two strokes. It doesn't sound like a lot, but he's like, just fixing a couple swings. And and I thought it was really interesting, him just talking about the difference between missing the cut every week and making the cut every week and how just the margins are so razor thin on tour. Wow. Wow. Yeah, that's impressive. I mean, it proves, too, what, how good like the next level down is, the, the, you know, the, the Corner Ferry Tour. Those guys are yeah amazing, but you know, it is and all it is is the difference of him and Ma- and Max Homa is just that one or two shots around, and those guys would go out and smoke any one of us out there without even without a hesitation, shoot seven eight under easily. But yet yeah, they're just one or two shots off. PJ two around, I know, it's crazy, yeah. Crazy. Yeah, it really is crazy. So, uh, well, thanks everyone for joining us. Nick uh, has all of his soccer plays up at Wager Talk. Also got his PGA pack up as well. I've got a 5% UFC play that goes off tonight on Dana White Contender Series if you're watching this on Tuesday. Again, do us a favor. Please hit the like button. It helps the algorithm out, helps us out. Let's Wager Talk know we're doing a good job for you if you've been enjoying the gambling content. Leave me a comment. Give me some advice. I'm going on a week long golf trip. I've never done this before. I've never played five, five. I never played five days in a row. I don't know if I played two days in a row, but I definitely never played <laughs> five days. Give me some secrets uh, in the comments section. Uh, we'll be back next week to uh, close out the regular season. Um, hope to see everyone next week. Good luck on your plays, and we'll see everyone on tea time.